John, do you know what the six red flags are for any relationship? Clark, good Monday morning, January 9th, 2023, the year of our Lord. Hey, I do now. I do now. Well, I know at least three of them. Let's put it that way. I know at least three of the red flags. And I also know that half of the internet is going to be very angry with us for even talking about it. Get ready, you red pill simps, and you <laughs> feminists. How? Okay, let me ask you a question. This goes yeah. on the TikTok or the YouTube or the Twitter. Mm -hmm. How do you piss off red pill guys and <laughs> women who belong to the streets with the same 30 <laughs> seconds? Did you see the one guy that stitched us in? And, um, and he, which, dude, please give us more. That, 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 that gives me life, uh, seeing, seeing you stitch us in. Uh, and, and talking about the video and everything that's that's just really cool because i think that's our that's probably one of our first stitches on tiktok but anyway the guy that stitches us in he's like oh you guys are just insecure and you're full of crap and everything like that he's like i've got a bunch of women in my life that are just friends and then he goes <laughs> i'd bang them if i had the chance yeah for sure <laughs> like dude you just proved the point well and then he also he, he has he also hashtagged it red pill right right which you know, I know more people who've been destroyed by the red pill movement than it's helped. And then we had a comment on YouTube from a guy who said, yeah, do you know how many women I have banged that were friends and I just waited for their boyfriend to screw up? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Take that feminist. And then, you know, yeah. of course you get the comments like, well, can't men control their urges or whatever? Like take it up with God. Can we control our urge? Absolutely. Absolutely. But what we're doing is we're waiting on you to open the door for us. So anyway, not we, not, not me and Matt. No, nope. in general. No, nope. John is a very devoted and faithful husband. My wife watches these videos. There's no doubt about it. John loves his wife. He wants to do a whole show about her. I said, no, <laughs> but let's get in. To the matter at hand, John Clark. Let's do it. This article comes from Brooke Steinberg at the New York Post. Of course it does. New York I, Post. Look, I am wondering when the New York Post is just going to cut us. Just give us the bag. Just give us the bag. <laughs> cut us a check. Listen, I'll we're looking too. I, I, we're right looking here. for we're we're looking for exclusivity. New York Post. We're look, looking, and it would take a surprisingly small amount of money for us to become the official podcast of the New York Post. Okay, so a, just hit us a, up. Give me a case of body armor, and I am <laughs> yours. I'll even get the tattoo right here. I need a, I need something right there. Anyways, Brooke Steinberg, my girl Brooke, wrote an article: the top six relationship red flags to look out for, and cheating isn't one of them. John Clark. Oh, okay. So our girl Brooke says, turns out a wandering eye isn't the biggest threat to modern cheek clapping, love and understanding. Okay. There are six main red flags that most men and women see as deal breakers in romantic partners and cheating and being from the streets. Isn't one <laughs> of them. <laughs> okay. Research launched in 2015 and published in the latest edition of the Personality and Individual Differences Journal. There's a journal for everything, apparently. <laughs> there sure is. There looked sure at, is. Looked at 285 undergraduate students in the U.S. with an average age of 22. Okay, well, it's at, I'm 41 years old. When you're 22, the world looks a little different. Let I'd just, say so. Let yeah, me just say I'd that. say so. I'd say so. Participants completed two rating scales, the mate value scale, a 22 item inventory of desirable traits rated by importance. Look, when you're asking 22 year olds what their desired traits are, I don't even know if they can get <laughs> 22 items on that list. Right, right, right. And social sexual orientation inventory a rating of how open they were in relationships this is gonna be great this is gonna be listen dude that sounded like you just had a stroke reading that sentence right there that did not make any sense 
Social sexual orientation inventory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is a rating of how open they were in relationships. Okay. Got so, it. So the research is based in the University of Liverpool in the UK. British. Ah. Investigated the disillusion of romantic relationships and friendships. Taking a deep dive into dark triad data to discover how often undetected narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopaths each predict breakup behavior. I don't know why I paused right there with psychopath. Maybe because you those- got you got narcissism and you got Machiavellianism. And psychopaths. <laughs> got stumped by psychopaths. I think I was just triggered because I remembered an ex-girlfriend carried all three of those. <laughs> Here are the telltale signs, according to research, people should be wary of when seeking a healthy, committed relationship, whether it be sexual or platonic. Are you ready? I'm ready. They concluded that six traits that were considered the most jarring warning signs for a doomed love match were being apathetic, gross, unmotivated, promiscuous, clingy, and addicted. Is promiscuous not cheating? I, well, is okay. it not cheating? What would really suck is if you're with somebody who's unmotivated and promiscuous at the same time. <laughs> If that's the case, they just don't like you. They're motivated, just not by you. (laughs) So the six warning signs, apathetic, gross, unmotivated, promiscuous, clingy, and addicted. Could you imagine hitting the jackpot and getting all (laughs) six of those in a woman or a man? However, whatever, you know, could you imagine? So John Clark would apathetic be a turnoff for you in a relationship Mm. i mean i don't know just general apathy yeah probably but it depends on what they're apathetic about because i'm apathetic about some stuff i don't care about everything that happens every single day uh so well you know what that is you know you know what the apathetic is it's the it's the it's the male feminist (laughs) <laughs> dude i i i was thinking and i know i know we're gonna go down the list here but wouldn't you say that like everybody you know probably has at least one of those traits like at least one but at least okay, one okay i know but- gross and promiscuity is kind of like way out there but like apathy unmotivated that kind of stuff like is that not just some people's general behavior Okay, human so DNA. The one thing that narcissists suck at is apathy. They don't have any apathy yeah, for really. anybody. So they're talking about these traits being like narcissistic, but then a warning sign is apathetic. So I don't, I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess, I guess it would be annoying if, like, I would never date somebody who was like a social warrior, regardless of what their opinion is. Like, somebody who's yeah. going to have like, political bumper stickers on their car one way or another like that doesn't that doesn't really uh vibe with me too much i'm not trying to attract that kind of energy into my life yes we talk politics but we don't pick sides and we're not gonna let the world know we pick sides because i don't want a brick through my window right (laughs) Right. yeah dude doesn't matter you're a trump fan you put a trump trump bumper sticker on your car you're gonna have like I don't know, BLM throwing a brick through the window. If you're a BLM fan, you definitely gonna get a Trump brick through a window yeah. because yeah. that's just how it goes. Number two on the list is gross. That's a warning sign for me. That oh, would be... sure. I mean, I guess define gross, right? Is it somebody who doesn't shower, doesn't take care of themselves? I mean, yeah, that's 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 a warning sign for sure. Well, you know, for me, if uh, if a woman is farting and burping. <laughs> <laughs> not having it, huh? Nope. 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 That would be that would be a deal. I don't care how long I was in a relationship, but that woman starts, you know, not being able to control her bodily fluids. I'm out. Out. <laughs> you go back to yesterday's episode. You better call that male orbiter to come pick your butt up from my house because you're out. Twenty years. 
20 years and goes down the drain by one down part. the drain one down part. the drain with one <laughs> one fart you're out okay. Unmo- unmotivated yeah that would be a red flag for me because like why don't you have any purpose or passion in your life yeah promiscuous red flag for sure totally now here's mine with i don't know if a red flag is clingy me either well see that's why i was saying like i feel like everybody has one of these right and to a certain extent and and i guess it depends on how you define clingy right if you've got somebody who literally cannot live without you and wants to be around you 24 7 yeah that's a problem right but like there's a certain amount of clinginess in every relationship i think because you just want to be around that person right if you don't want to be a little clingy i think something's probably wrong why would you want to be in a relationship or married to someone you don't want to be around right exactly exactly so i guess it depends on how they define clinginess that's kind of open-ended to be honest with you and then addicted that's kind of an open-ended one because you have people who are like i would never date a smoker they're so gross and then they smoke pot yeah totally or 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 are heavy drinkers or they're drunk all the time yeah yeah or you know i mean yeah. just like like are you addicted to the gym is that a bad thing right right i think you can have positive addictions here's the thing i think we're going to do an episode we're going to call it date night okay and we, we want to help you sip males and you boss babe women how to become more attractive and a hey, and you have to be single to be part of single night. All right. Don't be coming in here cleaning off your Instagram, taking pictures away of your spouse. Yeah. But the study considered how each red flag differed for long term and short term relationships as well as between men and women. When it came to long term relationships, being apathetic, inattentive, uncaring, untrusting, and dismissive of interest was considered the biggest red flag for both men and women. In second place came someone being gross, meaning having poor hygiene, being unattractive, smelling bad, or having certain health issues like an STD. Okay. That's pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, well, farting still takes the cake. Like, that's still number one deal breaker for me. If she's got syphilis or if she farts. You're taking you're taking the syphilitic gonorrhea girl. Well, because I know that most women who fart probably do have the gift that keeps on giving anyways, because they're slobs. In second place came someone being gross. We talked about that being clingy ranked third, which was seen by participants as covering, controlling behavior and being too jealous. I liked a little crazy. You sure do. I like you sure crazy. do. Hey, you know what? Get jealous. Come on. Come on. Go fight somebody in my behalf. I think that's a great time. All right. I ain't going to do it. I don't fight people. But you want to get crazy? Let's go. You want to get dumb? Get dumb, baby. Other major red flags in long term relationships include any sort of addiction, lack of motivation, ambition, and financial prospects. And lastly, being promiscuous, meaning having cheeks. With or having dated many other partners. Oh, so that's a body count thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I do care. I do care about the past. I heard um, I heard it on YouTube the other day. Um, somebody said something about how like women care about or care about men's futures. Men care about, care about women's past. And I, I think that's probably true to some extent. I don't know. It feels a little hokey to me because – I don't know. To some extent, we all kind of have a past, but we're all washed clean by the blood of Jesus, <laughs> except for the girl that farts. Oh no! Yeah, no, you're 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 the spot of Satan. She's going straight to hell. Yep. So women viewed as unmotivated, they view, women viewed an unmotivated partner as being more of a turnoff. The one that is promiscuous in a short-term relationship, while men said being promiscuous was worse. Because she cares about that bread, yo. Gotta get that bag. Mm-hmm. Gotta get that bag, baby. 
I, I saw a YouTube video the other day. I don't even know who it was from, but it was like some woman influencer dating thing. And she interviewed women and women's there was like these women, they're all in their twenties, of course, but they said that they would be married. They would, they would marry a guy knowing he would cheat on her. If he made over a half a million dollars a year. Yes. Yes. Dude, look at the, the most public example I can think is Tristan Thompson and Khloe Kardashian. Look how many times she keeps going back to that bump. No matter how often he cheats, yep. but it's because he got an eighty-eight million dollar contract a few years ago and is worth over a hundred million dollars. Well, look at what happened years ago with Kobe Bryant. May he rest in peace, Black Mamba. But when he cheated on his wife, yeah, and then they went and did the press conference, dude, and her ring was just like, yeah, dude, dude. That, that that buddy just bought. I believe the word was he bought her a one million dollar ring. She wore it right right to the press conference. I, I just I don't I don't. I don't – what would be – what would be something that you could just forgive? Like, yeah, okay, you're married. You've been married 11 years, so it never happened. But just go back in the time machine 12 years ago before you got married. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would be one thing you go, okay, I would marry this person knowing they're going to cheat on me. And I'm going to – I'm I like – but but it's okay. Would it, would it be a money thing for you? No, I don't like, man, if, if I, man, there's, I don't, I I literally can't get over that hurdle. If I I know they're going to cheat, I'm not, I'm not getting married to them. Right. Because, because it eventually for the guys, especially it eventually becomes a money thing. Right. Right. Like if you don't have a prenup, which most first marriages don't, especially if you're getting married young, right. Because nobody wants a prenup to, because they don't want the other person to feel like that they're unloved or whatever. So anyway, so most first marriages don't have a prenup, which means that, you know, if you're getting in bed with a cheater and you know that she's a cheater or he, for that matter, it's a 50, 50 split when you guys get divorced, maybe more so depending on if you got kids or not. So no, dude, I cannot, I can't think of, cause you know, like, dude, you know how, 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 how much of a miser I am. Um, and and I, dude, I'm I'm not making a decision that's gonna hurt my money. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> John Clark loves money so much he likes to take uh, he likes to put a twenty in the collection plate and make change at church. <laughs> Pulls out nineteen dollars. Here you go, God. There's your one. There's your one dollar. Do you want more? Make me prosper more. Yep. <laughs> What's the- I've been watching TBN. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tenfold my twenty. Myself a wife too. While I'm at it. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think, I think like a lot of these women, um, they know going in, whether it be with a Tristan Thompson or an Adam Levine or something like that, they know that that's the end. That that's not even the end game. Like that's the halftime report of a relationship is like, Oh, he's going to cheat on me when he's on the road, but they don't care because look at the life they get. Yeah. Yeah. They get this big old bread basket and, 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 and the guy's not going anywhere. He's not going to divorce them because he knows how much money it's going to cost him. So uh, she, she wants to stay and be cheated on. He's going to stay and let her. Uh, so, so there's a, um, if, if y'all remember the country artist, Rascal Flat. And in full disclosure, these people have been my friends, but it's out there now. It's public. So Joe Don Rooney and Tiffany Fallon. Joe Don was the guy in Rascal Flats. Tiffany Fallon was the former playmate. I think she was on The Apprentice. They're now going through a very messy divorce. Okay. okay? Last uh, 2021, Joe Don was drunk in Nashville, ran his car into a tree. Starting to look a lot like Rand Paul, which come on, buddy, we got to work on that. So they're going through a divorce. Mm. So Joe Don says about Tiffany Fallon, oh, well, she's like, the reason why our marriage failed is because she's cheating on me with the trainer. And she was. She comes back by, you know, be a publicist, of course. Uh, well, I'm only cheating because of your addiction. And I'm like, you're both like just sitting here right now. 
admitting for the world to see <laughs> that you're cheating, but you're going, hey, you know what? It's okay because you're a drunk. You're, you're the, uh, dude, it's like a snake eating its tail, man. Yeah. It's just it's just an endless circle of crap. Nobody so, wins. So Nobody I saw wins. that and I was like, okay, like you just admitted you're cheating, but it's like, oh, well, it's okay because he's a drunk. Mm-hmm. Totally. If he wasn't running into light poles, I wouldn't be driven into the arms of my trainer. Bro, that dude, I mean, I know the road that he ran off, like, because it's about 10 minutes from my house. Mm. How, that's impressive. <laughs> you you got to be so drunk to, like, get your car <laughs> over where it was. <laughs> but, I don't know, like, what do you have going on in your life these days, like, your band's over, and you look like Rand Paul. I would drink, too. Never going to get back the glory days. He was a beautiful man at one point. Now he's looking like Rand Paul. Kids, I, that's what alcohol will do to you. Uh, bro, all the guys in Rascal Flats were beautiful, except the lead singer, right? Uh, like he, the other two, a, the other always, two were He was gorgeous. always a mutant. <laughs> The guy who had the talent, who had the voice, he was right. the only reason he was in the band is either he had money or, you know, or he had money because the other two guys were like beautiful. Yeah. And then you got the test tube baby. <sighs> Apparently he's a very nice guy, but yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. All right. Well, my Tuesday, Tuesday, we'll be back. I don't really have a whole lot on this topic besides yeah. don't marry unmotivated clingy. Well, don't marry. Clingy's uh, fine. Clingy's fine as long as it's clingy to you and not the other guy, the orbiter. Right, right. The one she's promiscuous with, she can't be a clinger. <laughs> Anyways, therance.com. We're going to go live sometime this week. Yeah, sometime. Maybe, maybe on TikTok. tomorrow. Maybe Wednesday. Maybe YouTube, TikTok. But, you know, then you can come heckle us live in person, Kelsey. Do it. Do it. TheRants.com. We'll see you tomorrow.